Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Maundy Thursday in the parish of Abbeydale and Millhouses. Let us pray. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Is it nothing to you? All you who pass by, look and see if there's any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction, my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. To the soul that seeks, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 42. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now, when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God. For I will yet give him thanks, who is my, the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from, the Her and from Hermon and the hill of Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the thunder of your waterfalls. All your breakers and waves have gone over me. The Lord will grant his loving kindness in the daytime. Through the night his song will be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? As they crush my bones, my enemies mock me, while all day long they say to me, where is now your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. 
glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, reading from verse 2. The Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron not to come just at any time into the sanctuary inside the curtain before the mercy seat that is upon the ark, or he will die, for I appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen tunic and shall have the linen undergarments next to his body, fasten the linen sash and wear the linen turban. These are the holy vestments. He shall bathe his body in water and then put them on. He shall take from the congregation of the people of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering for himself and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron shall cast lots on the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for Azazel. Aaron shall present the goat on which, he, which the lot fell to the Lord and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for Azazel shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, so that it may be sent away into the wilderness to Azazel. Aaron shall present the bull as a sin offering for himself, and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall slaughter the bull as a sin offering for himself. He shall take a censer full of coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, and two handfuls of crushed sweet incense, and he shall bring it inside the curtain and put the incense on the fire before the Lord so that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the covenant, or he will die. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the front of the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat he shall sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. He shall slaughter the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring its blood inside the curtain, and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull, sprinkling it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Thus he shall make atonement for the sanctuary because of the uncleannesses of the people of Israel and because of their transgressions, all their sins. And he shall do for the, for the tent of meeting, which remains with them in the midst of their uncleannesses. No one shall be in the tent of meeting from the time he enters to make atonement in the sanctuary until he comes out and has made atonement for himself and for his house and for all the assembly of Israel. Then he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement on its behalf and shall take some of the blood of the bull and of the blood of the goat and put it on each of the horns of the altar. He shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from, from the uncleannesses of the people of Israel. When he has finished atoning for the holy place and the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall present the live goat. Then Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel and all their transgressions all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and sending it away into the wilderness by means of someone designated for the task. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to a barren region, and the goat shall be set free in the wilderness. Then Aaron shall enter the tent of meeting and shall take off the linen vestments that he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. He shall bathe his body in water in a holy place and put on his vestments. Then he shall come out and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people, making atonement for himself and for all the, and for the people. 
Here ends the reading. A song of the Lord's gracious deeds. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. When is this that comes from Edom, coming from Bosra, his garment stained, crim his garment stained crimson? Who is this in glorious apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength? It is I who announce that right has won that day. It is I, says the Lord, for I am mighty to save. Why are your robes all, all red, O Lord, and your garments like theirs who, treat, who tread the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. I will recount the greatest deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. All that God has done for us in his mercy by his many acts of love. For God said, Surely they are my people, my children who will not deal falsely, and he became the saviour in all their distress. So God redeemed them by his love and pity. He lifted them up and carried them through all the days of old. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning <coughs> now and shall be forever. Amen. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. <clears throat> the second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, reading from verse 1. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, we found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered, you say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at, such at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. <coughs> Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, <coughs> but they kept shouting, crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I've found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demands should be granted. He released the man they asked for the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, 
and he handed Jesus over as they wished. Here ends the second reading. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. <clears throat> God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The Benedictus. Christ loved those who were his and showed them how deep was his love for them. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into a, the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ loved those who were his, and showed them how deep was, was his love for them. <clears throat> Let us pray. <coughs> On this Maundy Thursday, we think of the obedience of Jesus. We think of his desire to serve. We think of his command to all of us to love one another as he loved us. And so in our tasks this day <clears throat> and over the coming days, we ask Lord that you will help us to see how we can serve each other and how we can love each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, we ask for your help in all of those parts of the world that are suffering. We think of the people in South Africa suffering from the floods. We think of people around the world who are hungry those who are oppressed. We think of all people in war-torn areas. Lord, we ask for your help, for your compassion and love, that there may be ways in which it can be shown to people even in the midst of suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for all of those people who are dispossessed, who have no homes, who are powerless and in the hands of others. We especially think of those who are at the hands of evildoers, who are not thinking of their, of caring for them, but of their own gain. Lord, we ask that your love and your truth will pervade all of those who deal with people in need. Those who are homeless and dispossessed. And we thank you, Lord, for all of the agencies who seek to help them. 
and we pray for right and just treatment of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our planet, that you'll help us care for it and to value and look after the resources and the beauty in the earth around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick in body or mind or spirit. We think especially of those known to us, those in our parish. We pray for Peter Quarrel, your loving arms to be with him, around him, and with his family. Lord, may they know your love. May Peter know your presence at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died and those who mourn. We pray for the soul of Stan Nuttall. And today, as we meet to plan his funeral, I ask, Lord, that you will be blessing and guiding the choices and decisions that will be made. That in this time of planning and waiting, you will help us all to remember Stan with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the church, for all of its structures, for the leadership in the diocese, for the strategies, and for the outworking of all of the things that are still feeling new. Lord, we ask your wisdom and guidance on the practical outworkings of these things. We think especially of the position that will be coming up for the new post of Director of Mission and Ministry. And we pray for the outgoing post holders. Lord, we ask for a smooth transition and that those people capable of doing the job well will sense your calling and come forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for our parish, for each member of it especially those who will speak to no one today. We thank you for all of those in our parish who seek to offer pastoral care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we prepare for our Easter worship and Holy Week worship for Maundy Thursday this evening with the morning prayer and walk of witness tomorrow and then the Stations of the Cross and for a joyful Easter celebration on Sunday. We pray for your blessing on all involved in preparing for and leading those services that it may be truly a time of walking close to you and of sensing and experiencing once again the joy of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, let us pray now for any particular needs that we have at this time.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray now the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. <coughs> Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. <coughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Andy.